The Force is with us once again with Star Wars The Last Jedi, written and directed by Rian Johnson. With the Republic all but wiped out, the Resistance is struggling to survive against the power of the First Order. Kylo Ren is struggling with his inner conflicts between the dark side and the light, and Rey is struggling to convince Luke Skywalker to come home and join the fight already. Now before we go any further, this is going to be a spoiler-free video. However, there will probably be a few minor details revealed. Nothing that spoils any large chunks of the plot or anything, but a few things here and there. So if you don't want any of that, if you want to go in completely fresh, stop watching right now. It's okay, I won't be offended. So now that that's out of the way, holy shit, this was amazing. Rian Johnson has done something truly remarkable with The Last Jedi. He came into a franchise that already has eight movies and two TV series and whatever comics and novels are still considered canon, and he told a story that was almost entirely unpredictable. There is a line in this movie where Luke says, this is not going to go the way you think. Boy, howdy, he was right. The questions that the movie did answer, the questions that it did not answer, the fate of certain characters, Rey, Kylo, Supreme Leader Snoke, Luke, uh, some of the new characters like Vice Admiral Haldo and Rose, and a certain character whose name I will not mention. This movie kept me on my toes all the way up until the very last shot. And it wasn't unpredictable just for the sake of it. There was actually a method to the madness. The stuff that I did not expect still made sense in the end. Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi is so different from any previous version of Luke that we've seen, but it still felt like a natural evolution of the character considering what he's been through since the end of Return of the Jedi. His failure with Ben Solo and his subsequent self-imposed exile have clearly affected his outlook on life. And his very first scene with Rey, which basically picks up right where we left them at the end of The Force Awakens, not at all how I thought that was going to go, but it was brilliant. Because as soon as that happened, I'm like, okay, I did not see that coming, and I want to know where they're going with this. The movie deals a lot with failure and learning from said failure. A lot of times in these sorts of movies, the bad guys are about to trample the ever-loving shit out of the good guys, but then they come up with a brilliant plan that saves their asses just in the nick of time. In The Last Jedi, sometimes that brilliant plan doesn't work. Or if it does, there are severe consequences that make you wonder if it was really worth it. Sometimes they kind of have to go with the Captain Cold strategy. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go wrong, throw away the plan. And sometimes failure can be a very good teacher. Sometimes you need to fail horribly to bring your arrogant ass back down to earth, whether you're a lowly farm boy or a Jedi master. And speaking of lowly farm boys and Jedi masters, anyone has the potential for greatness. You don't necessarily have to be of the right social standing or bloodline. You damn sure don't have to be a Skywalker. And those who you might consider legends are by no means infallible. And there is an unusual amount of nuance in this movie compared to previous Star Wars movies. Typically, you have your clear-cut good guys and your clear-cut bad guys. You got the Rebellion and the Empire, the Jedi and the Sith. And they're usually all the way on the opposite ends of the spectrum. There's not much in the way of Shades of Grey. I mean, there's a little bit, but not a whole lot. Definitely not the case in The Last Jedi. I think Rian Johnson did a fantastic job with this movie. Perhaps a few minor pacing issues here and there, but overall, excellent. His use of humor in this movie was particularly effective, far more so than certain other movies in this franchise that I could mention. You so know what Misa talking about. I was also very impressed by his use of silence, which is something you really don't hear in a Star Wars movie. There's always someone talking or blowing shit up 
or some machine whirring or beeping in the background, or at the very least, John Williams' score. You never hear nothing. And in this movie, there's a fair amount of just silence. One shot in particular that I hesitate to describe even a little bit, because I don't want to spoil anything, but holy shit, that was expertly done. Mark Hamill has come a long way since, but I was going to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. Eee. He was hands down the best he has ever been in this movie. Carrie Fisher, God rest her soul, was fantastic, but I don't need to tell you that. And I loved how they once again reminded us that she is very strong with the Force, despite not actually being a Jedi. I think they could have done a little more with that, but I'll take what I can get. Ray, Finn, and Poe are still awesome. Sadly, they don't get to interact with each other as much as I would have liked, because they're basically off doing their own thing. Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver worked very well together. Their interactions were some of the best parts of this movie. Andy Serkis did another great mocap performance what he does. Kelly Marie Tran was a lot of fun as Rose, who basically starts out as a thin fangirl. A thin girl? And putting a fangirl type character in a Star Wars movie is perhaps a bit risky, but it paid off here, and actually fit pretty well with the theme of recognizing that your heroes are flawed. And once again, not enough Captain Phasma. Oh well. Overall, loved it. This was so well done. I am so happy that Rian Johnson is getting his own Star Wars trilogy because I want more. I don't know if I would call it the best Star Wars movie to date, but I'm definitely putting it right up there. It's very close to Empire. And I honestly have no earthly idea where they're going to go from here. I couldn't even hazard a guess what they're going to do with Episode Nine, But it's going to be a lot of fun finding out. If you haven't seen it, the hell are you waiting for? Go! Go! And that about does it for The Last Jedi. So until next time, see you around, kid.